right, hello and welcome to our second lesson on beginning computer programming using the language Python. Um, I would tell you if you haven't watched the first video where we get all set up with our coding environment, you should go back and check that out first. But uh, before we begin actually doing some code today, which we are going to do, makes me super excited, we're going to talk about a little news that is actually pretty appropriate for what we're talking about. Um, if you've done a little digging since last week about Python and maybe read some news or anything, a big thing happened last week, and we need to kind of talk about it because it will impact you going forward just a little bit. Now, what has happened is that Python has made a decision that they made a long time ago to sort of get rid of part of its code. And I've got a little whiteboard here so we can explain what's happening. So from here... For a very, 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 very long time, there have been two versions of Python that are out in the wild. You will see Python 2 and Python 3. They're both very, very similar languages, but there have been some changes. And just like every kind of technology, a bigger number means newer. Um, so Python 2 has been around for a very long time. Python 3 is you know, new, fairly new, um, which we'll talk about here in a second. But really, Python 2 has been chugging along, just doing its own thing for a long time, and Python 3 has been doing the same thing. It's just kept going. Now, the developers of Python decided about 10 years ago, so this has been going on for a while, that as of last week, Python 2 is deprecated. And what deprecated means is it's just no longer supported. So anything that's written in Python 2 could possibly be broken. Um, and like I said, they gave everybody 10 years to kind of know that this was going to happen. So it wasn't a big surprise to anybody. But sometimes when you look out in the wild, you'll see some Python 2 code. Really, for your benefit and for the benefit of the code that you write, you want to stick with Python 3. Everything we're going to do here is going to be Python 3. Um, most of the things you find on the Internet, if you're looking for tutorials and things, will be in Python 3. But you just kind of need to pay attention to it. Um, Sometimes you'll find some old stuff that has Python 2, and it's code that you want to reuse. You just have to look up and see what the differences between the two are to use it and convert that into Python 3. So just be careful and aware that that is a thing you need to pay attention to. Just always look and make sure that what you're dealing with is Python 3 code. That is the Python going forward. Nobody should be writing any code in Python 2. Okay, with that, let's switch over and let's do some actual coding. Okay, so now it's where we get to the really fun part. We're going to start actually writing some code, which is why you're here, right? So, kind of traditionally, when you start learning to code, everybody learns the first program. So when you learn a new language, the first program you learn is always called Hello World. And the purpose of that is just to show you how to print something either into a console or onto a screen. Um, Python is no different. So what we're going to do is I'm going to type in the Hello World program, and then we're going to dissect it. And by dissecting it, you'll learn a little bit about the program, and then you'll be able to go ahead and start using what you learned to write another program. So by the end of this lesson, I'm going to give you homework for the next one to try to write a program. And then we'll go over that in the next lesson. And we'll probably keep doing that. It's just sort of leapfrogging along our lessons, giving you little projects to work on so you get a good idea of how to handle the language. One of the things you have to get out of your head is that just watching this, you're going to learn how to code. That's not the way it works. You actually have to do the thing you want to learn, which is kind of difficult, you know, um, but we'll work through it. It's not as bad as you think it's going to be. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write out Hello World. And for Python, it's actually pretty simple. So we're going to write print, and then here we're going to write Hello World. And I'm actually going to, mm, let's just give it a little... Uh, little exclamation point because it's cool. Okay, now I'm in REPL.IT. We said that that's going to be kind of our lowest barrier to entry, but I will switch around a little bit. But for right now, we're just going to stay where what everybody has. It's just going to be REPL IT. Mine looks a little different. We talked about setting that up in the first lesson. Okay, now you'll see that this box came up and it gives me a bunch of what kind of looks like strange gibberish. You will eventually understand what this means. But for right now, it's just a helper. It helps you understand what's going on. But let me get rid of that. Okay, so here we are. So the code is print, and that is right here. It has a parenthesis behind it, and then that has a closing parenthesis. That's going to be important. We're going to talk about what that is in a second. And then inside, I have the words hello world, and then they have a quotation mark, a single quotation mark around it. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. There's a couple things there. But what this does is it simply prints out what is inside that those parentheses. Okay, so when I go up here to this run button, which looks like the play button, um, it should just print hello world in my REPL. 
over here. So let's see what happens. And it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Now, let's dissect this a little bit so we know exactly what's happening. Print is what we call a function. Uh, most programming, actually all programming languages, have the idea of functions. And if you've paid attention in algebra class, you probably remember what a function is. Um, in case you didn't, let's go do a little homework here on that. So let me switch over here. We're going to go to my little whiteboard. I'm going to pull my thing over. And let's talk about a function. What is a function in math or in algebra? Um, one of the things that you hear a lot is that you have to be good at math to be a good programmer. I would argue that that's not exactly true. If you are good at math, it makes you a better programmer. But really, you don't need to be. So we're just going to do a little bit of a review. It's not a whole lot of math, just enough to so we remember what we're doing here. I'm going to switch colors. Okay. Now, in math, a function has a special notation. Uh, usually it looks something like this, f of x is equal to, and we'll just write a function and we'll call it 2x. Okay, so the way this works in math is the name of the function is f. It has an input, or sometimes you'll hear it called the domain. In programming, sometimes we call this an argument. They're all words that mean the same thing. So in functional notation, we have the name, which is f. We have its input, what we're putting into the function, which is x. The way I like to think of functions is this is a little machine, right? So I plug in something to this machine, and it spits out the answer. So it's going to take the input x and put it here. So this would be 2 times x, which let's just say I'm going to put in 3. So x is equal to 3. So I put in that, so this would be 2 times 3. So f of 2, so with an in, or I'm sorry, f of 3, if I put in 3, my answer would be 6. So a function is just a little piece of code or a little piece of math that does a thing when you give it an input. And really, in programming, it's no different. That is exactly how they work. So if I were to uh, change this to code, all a function really is, let me switch colors here again, is in this case print. Okay, print just like the f. This is the name of the function. Okay, now in Python, your functions sometimes, most of the time, are going to have parentheses. These are, this is what the, takes the input. So whatever your input is, it goes inside these parentheses. So in our case, when we wrote our code, we're using the print function. And we are inputting hello world. Okay, so print is the name of it and it's taking the input of hello world. Now, behind the scenes, print is a program. And that's one of the things that I kind of want you to get in your head is that functions are just programs. They're little bitty programs that that really, in this case, since you're just starting, they're programs that somebody else wrote, and you're just going to reuse them. Now, later, probably in the next lesson, you're going to learn how to create your own functions. That way, it kind of opens up a little bit for you. But for right now, these are just primitive functions. Primitives are built into the language. You'll hear people talk about that, or built-in functions. Um, so really, a function is just a little program that you use to do something. And in this case, it's something that's already written. Now, we talked about in the last episode, or the last lesson, I guess, not an episode, we talked about having an auxiliary brain and writing whenever you learn something to write that down because it's going to be important in the future. So I'm going to model that right now. So I'm going to switch over here. And I'm in my text editor, which is Emacs, and we talked about that before. You don't have to use Emacs. It's just what I use. Um, you could use Notepad. You could use a Word document. You could write it down in a notebook. It doesn't have to be digital. So... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to model this. So right now, I just learned a thing. I learned that functions are essentially just little programs. So I'm going to make a note here. And I'm going to say, okay, functions. And I like to put things in outline form. That's just the way I think. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make an outline. And I'm using uh, a little language called org mode to, to do that. You don't need to have that installed. And what I said is it's a small program 
that takes an input. Uh, we said that they could be pre-made. Uh, well, let's change the terminology. Let's call them built-in. Sometimes that's called a primitive. Or you can make your own. Okay. Now I have that. I'm just going to save it. That way I have it written to my computer, and it's there when I need it. So let's go ahead and let's go back Okay, so we started by looking at Hello World, and this is sort of the traditional version of Hello World. The thing about programming, and this is one of the ways that's a lot like math, is you can get to the same place by doing different things. Um, Hello World does not have to look this way. You can change it quite a bit. Um, and we're going to do that a little bit, but we need to explain one more part of this before we can do that. And we need to explain the Hello World part. Now, you'll notice that Hello World is in quotation marks, and I could actually rewrite this. Uh, let me do a little switcheroo here. And if I wanted, I could go down here and I could write print, if I could spell. And this time I'm going to use double quotes. Okay, to do the same thing. Now, looking at that, the only thing that's different is those quotation marks. If I run it, I get the same output. Now, this is an, a thing to notice. Um, as far as strings, which is the data type that we're getting ready to talk about, it doesn't matter if you surround these in single quotes or if you surround them in double quotes. The computer will interpret that the same way. Um, sometimes you need to put quotes inside of quotes, and then you'll use the, the opposite inside of the other. But really, depending on how you want to write it, you can write it either way. Now, I said something, and I'm just going to type it on here. We're going to use this sort of as a text editor. We talked about strings. Okay, well, what is a string? In programming, and this is common across most programming languages, strings are just words. And they're words that the computer doesn't really even understand. It is words that are meant for humans to read. So actually, let's go back to our, our notebook here. And we switch over here, and let's, let's take some notes about strings because that's important to know. I go over here and oh, I'm gonna make another here. Let's do a strings. And I said that strings are just words. Okay. They are surrounded. By either quotation marks or single quotation marks. The computer doesn't read these. They are for humans. Okay, so going back Let's do another little switcheroo here. Now, that string, hello world, the computer doesn't really know what that means. But it's going to print it out on the screen for us when I put it in uh, parentheses. Now, every data type, which a string is a data type. We're going to talk about some more data types later. But a string has lots of different functions you can use on it or lots of different methods you can use on it. Right now, print is a function you can use on strings. You can use print on other data types, but for, for right now, we're going to use the strings. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this again, and we're going to try something different. So I'm going to continue to use print because that, that's working for me. Now, I'm going to do something. I'm going to break this into separate words. I'm going to do hello, and then I'm going to put a plus sign. And then I'm going to do world. Okay. So if you just kind of look, let me get that box away. If you look at the code now, I took a string called hello, and I'm adding a string called world. Now, when you're using strings, they use a different term than adding. They use the term concatenate, which is a big word, but it means the same thing. So just kind of using basic common sense, this should print hello and then it's going to add world to it. That should be all that happens here. So I'm going to hit run. Let's see what happens. 
Now, it did the first line, it did the second line, did exactly what I expect. What's wrong with the, the third one there? It smooshed them together, right? Those words are right against each other. And that's a thing you have to kind of understand about computers. Computers, we think of as being these really smart things. They're not smart at all. They do exactly what you tell them to. It's almost like having a two-year-old. If you tell them to do a thing, they do it exactly the way you tell them to do it. So the computer did exactly what I told it to. It took hello, and it smashed it together with world and made hello world all together with no space. So if I want to fix that, I can go into this first string right there, and then I'm just going to add a space like that. So there's an empty space in there, and then let's rerun it, and that will fix it. And that makes it exactly the same way that we wanted it to be. Now, there's one more way that I think I would want to write this. And that would be using a variable. And so variables, you should know for math. We're going to switch over. We'll look at our whiteboard. I keep calling it a whiteboard, but I guess I should be calling it a blackboard because it's black. All right, let's go here. Let's erase this and let me grab my tablet. Okay, so another quick little math lesson. Nothing Nothing crazy, I promise. It's not a math class. So we're going to go here. And I'm going to just do, this is going to be really simple math. 3 plus x is equal to 8. Okay? Most of you, if you're, if you're watching this, you probably have already figured that out. It doesn't take a lot. But let's just go through this and pretend like it's math class. This here, this is my variable. Okay, and a variable can be any number. So I go here, I do the inverse operation. So I go here and I subtract three, and then x is equal to five. So what was stored inside that x? What really was inside x was the number five the whole time. We just had to figure it out because we didn't see it right there in front of us. Variables work that way. I like to think of variables like buckets, right? Um, if I have a red bucket, I can put anything in that bucket that fits in that bucket. Right, And then I can move that bucket around from place to place to place to place. And whatever's in that bucket goes with me. Um, a variable works exactly the same way. So in math, the way we show what a variable means is just like this. We would say something like x is equal to 5. Or we could say something like l is equal to 12. Or, I mean, this is a little absurd, but it may it, it, kind of the same thing. We could say that, you know, a smiley face is equal to, uh, let's just say zero. Okay, so you just have a symbol that is your bucket that rep is holding something. Programming works exactly the same way. There's nothing different about this than there is in math. So we'll switch over here, and let's see how we're gonna do this with the actual programming language. I'm gonna switch over to my coding here. Now, we're going to use a variable. And like I said, just like in math, Python declares variables the same way. And when we say declare, we just say mean what we're putting in that space. Okay, so we're going to declare a variable, and we're going to call this variable greeting. And we're going to put an equals next to it. Just like x is equal to 5, greeting is going to be equal to. And we're going to say, we're going to set this to a string, and we're going to say the string is hello world. Okay. Now, when I say hello world, that is greeting, if that makes sense. So now, instead of having to write hello world every time I want to use that string, I can just write the word greeting. Um, in this case, greeting is not that much shorter than hello world, but if I want to keep reusing it, this is a good way to do it. Now, oops. now we're going to go here, and I'm going to write another version of this. We're going to print, and instead of doing... Uh, hello world, I'm just going to say print greeting. Okay, so now what should happen is I should, I should have a fourth one when I hit run, and it should be exactly the same as these. Let's see if it works. There you go. So right now we've got four different ways to um, write the same program. These are all hello worlds. Now I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to increase... The flexibility of this. Now, every time I write it, it says hello world. What if I wanted to personalize this? What if I wanted to say hello to you specifically? I can use the same framework. Now, I am going to have to use a new function to do that. So we're going to learn another function. Um, here, we're going to hit print, or we're going to use print again, because that is a good way 
So we're going to, going to print a variable. So let's let's make a variable called name. And then before that, we'll put a string that says hello. Nope. And I'm going to put a space after it because we already said that we need that space. And I put a little comma after it, kind of keep our grammar right. And then I'm going to add a plus. And then so what this should do is whatever I decide name is, it should say hello, comma, a space, and then whatever we put into name. So let's go up here before this and let's make name. So name is my variable. I'm going to set my variable equal to how are we going to get somebody's name? Well, there's another function. We're going to use the function called input. And just like every other function, it has parentheses around it. And whatever I put in that parentheses, it's going to ask this question. So I'm going to put a string in that says, what is your name? And a question mark. And let's do this. And maybe a little space just to make it look a little better. And I'm going to go up here. And we've been playing with these, but I'm going to get rid of them. And you'll see I'm putting a hashtag in front of it or... Uh, a pound sign. Actually, in programming, it's called an octothorpe, which is, you know, a big long word. But what that is, is commenting out. I basically just told the computer to ignore this. Um, we'll talk about comments in another, another, actually, maybe the next lesson we'll talk about comments. So right now, all that's in my program is we have a variable called name. We're setting that equal to the function input. And the input's going to ask us a question. It's going to say, what is your name? We're going to enter a name. And then it's going to store whatever I entered into name, the variable. Then we go to print, and it's going to print the string hello. And then we're going to concatenate or add whatever was stored in name. Okay? So let's see how this works. Let's go ahead and run it. Oh, what is it? I guess it doesn't like that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so here we are. It wants to know my name. I'm going to give it my name. My name is Josh, so I'm going to do that. And then when I hit enter, it should say, hello, Josh. And there you go. I took my variable, and I put it inside that print function, and it printed out exactly what I wanted. Okay, so now you've learned a couple things today. Um, let's go ahead and put some of those in notes that we haven't already done. Go grab our auxiliary brain here. And we go to here. Okay, so we said strings, and I'm going to make a little bit of a change here. Because um, we said that strings were really a, a data type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, okay, and above this, I'm going to create a thing called data types. And then I'm actually going to kind of... Put this under it like that. And then I'm going to grab this other one, and I'm going to move it over here. Because we're going to have lots of data types. So I just want one heading that is about data types, and then we'll do the rest. And I just did a thing where it, it folded that and put it underneath. You don't have to worry about that. That's probably not a thing you're going to be able to do. Now, we did learn a couple functions. So let's put in input. And what input does is it takes a user input, not unput, input. OK, and we learned about variables. And those store information. OK. And the way you do that is with the equal sign. You just say this is equal to that. Okay. So now that we've done our notes, we're going to switch back here. Now, let's talk about homework because that's going to be the next thing you do. 
your homework for next week is it's going to look a little similar to this, but I want you to to do it in your own style. You can look and find some resources and do it on your own. I want you to create a program that asks for somebody's name, their age, their height, and their birthday. So name, age, height, and birthday. And I want you to print out all of those things. So once you say it, I want it to say something like your name is this, you weigh this much, you're this old, this many years old, and you know, just print out everything you get. If you want to get creative, you can add more things to that. You can uh, display it in interesting ways. It's up to you. Uh, the bare minimum is just to get it to work, and then we will talk about how to make that a little better as you go along. So with that, I will see you guys next time.